Hello, and welcome to English Micro Listening Lessons, where you can improve your listening skills by learning how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. This series of videos can be watched in any order and can be used for self-study by independent English language learners or in a classroom by English language teachers. There's information in the box below the video for teachers. Spoken English can be difficult to understand due to something called connected speech, which is the continuous stream of sounds without clear borders between a sequence of words. There, that's better. Some features of connected speech that can make sounds change or disappear at word boundaries and affect your ability to hear words you know are coalescence, elision, reduction, assimilation, resyllabification, linking, and intrusion. Don't worry. I'll explain what each of these means in this series. Awareness of them will improve your ability to hear individual words in the stream of spoken English. Ready? Here we go. This is Ashley Adkins. She recorded herself interviewing for a nursing job. This is the beginning of the video call. What is different about the way Ashley pronounces each can right here in red? And why does she say them differently? If you're watching with someone else or with your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers. So what was different? She pronounced the first can right here using its full form, I can, and the second one using its weak form, kun. She said, kun, you'll hear me. So I can, kun, you'll hear me. Why did she do that? We use the full form of a word if it is emphasized or at the end of a sentence. So here it was at the end of the sentence and probably emphasized. Auxiliary verbs are often at the end of sentences in short answers in English. So this was a short answer to the question, can you hear me, from the interviewer. She just said, I can. In a fuller sentence or question, though, when an auxiliary verb is followed by other words, the weak form is often used. So here, it was just, can, can you hear me? So a quick review on auxiliary verbs, since we're focusing on their weak forms in this video. An auxiliary verb is a verb that is used with another verb to show things like tense, person, or modality. Auxiliary verbs are sometimes called helping verbs or supporting verbs. There are three main auxiliary verbs in English, be, do, and have. And they change form, which means they can be conjugated. So be can change to am, is, are, was, were. Um, do can change to does or did. And have can change to has or had. And modal verbs are also auxiliary verbs, but they don't change form. So they always stay right here like this. And those are can, could, may, might, must, shall, should, will, would. So to give you an example in a sentence of an auxiliary verb, Mary has traveled to Japan. So has is the auxiliary verb have, conjugated. And it shows the tense, it shows us that we're using the present perfect here, and it shows the person, uh, which is a third person singular here. And the modality, modal verbs, show things like possibility or obligation. So not all of these auxiliary verbs have weak forms. So for example, we're not really going to be looking at may or might today. So what are weak forms? 
They are the reduced form of function words, which are also known as grammar words, which are the smaller, less important words that help make meaning more precise. So some types of function words are conjunctions, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, articles, and pronouns. So to go back to that sentence, Mary has traveled to Japan. The important content words are Mary, the subject, traveled, which is the main verb, and Japan here. So has and to are the function words. Has is an auxiliary verb and to is a preposition. So these Mary traveled in Japan are the ones that carry the meaning, carry the content. If a person only said Mary traveled Japan, you would more or less understand what they were trying to tell you. But if they only said the function words, if they only said has, to, you would not understand their message at all. So while they don't carry meaning, they do make this whole sentence more precise. So why are weak forms important to know? Well, of the 100 most frequently spoken words in English, 50 are function words that have weak forms. And you'll hear weak forms more often in spoken English than you'll hear the full forms. So weak forms are actually the standard in spoken English, and the full form is the exception. So if you expect to hear weak forms in natural spoken English, it'll make listening to it much easier for you. So why are weak forms hard to hear? There are many reasons. First, they are not stressed in a sentence. The important content words are, like Mary traveled Japan. Uh, the weak forms are shorter, they're pronounced quickly, and they're not usually pronounced clearly. And some sounds disappear completely when they're surrounded by more important words in connected speech. And the vowel often changes to a schwa sound. So just a quick explanation of the schwa. It's represented by an upside down E. And it sounds like uh. It's made in the throat with a relaxed mouth. So lips, teeth, tongue, jaw are all relaxed. Um, and it's, it's kind of the sound you might make if somebody punched you in the stomach. Just uh, uh. It is actually the most common vowel sound in English. And many unstressed vowels sound like the schwa. They, they change their sound to the schwa. So to give you an example, in this phrase right here, a million Americans, it has seven syllables, and five of those syllables have the schwa sound. So here, a just becomes a, uh, and million, mil is a stressed syllable, so it gets its full vowel sound, i, but then yun just gets the schwa, uh, yun. And then with Americans, again, we've got schwa, a, uh, the stressed syllable mare gets its full vowel sound, but the other two unstressed syllables do not. A million Americans. If you don't understand these symbols I'm using to represent sounds and pronunciation, please see the link below the video to the interactive phonemic chart. So let's take a look at the weak form of some auxiliary verbs. Um, so here, uh, am is the full form, but you might just hear um, um. an example is, am I talking too loudly? Am I talking too loudly? And instead of is, you might just hear is. Is. is he going to Oxford? Is he going to Oxford? Instead of are, you might just hear er. Are you coming? Are you coming? Instead of do, you might just hear duh. Do they live here? Do they live here? Instead of 
does, you might just hear, does, does, does your mother know? Does your mother know? Instead of have, the H disappears, and then you just hear, of, like, have you ever been to Egypt? Have you ever been to Egypt? Instead of has, the H disappears again, and you just get us. So, but has he seen the new house? But has he seen the new house? Instead of had, the H disappears again, change to schwa, you just get ud. So had they received the gift? So had they received the gift? So notice that every single week form has the vowel change to the schwa, to that upside down E highlighted in red here. So sometimes saying a feature of connected speech, like these weak forms of auxiliary verbs, can help you hear them when other people use them. So please listen and repeat after me. Um. Um. Am I talking too loudly? Uz. Uz. Is he going to Oxford? Er. Er. Are you coming? Duh. Duh. Do they live here? Does. Does. Does your mother know? Of. Of. Have you ever been to Egypt? Uz. Uz. But has he seen the new house? Ud. Ud. So had they received the gift? And here we have some more, the modals. So instead of hearing can, like in our video with Ashley, you probably just hear kun. It almost sounds like there's no vowel, kun. Like, can I go? And instead of could, you might just hear k. The whole ending disappears, the, the whole LD sound. So for example, she could be famous. And instead of would, you might just hear w, like they would buy those. And instead of should, you might just hear sh, we should be more careful. Instead of will, you might hear wool, like will you be okay? Instead of must, you might just hear must, like he must know something. So the T disappears in that one. And instead of shall, you might just hear shall. Shall I tell her? So again, listen and repeat after me. Kun. Kun. Can I go? She could be famous. Wuh. Wuh. They would buy those. Sh. Sh. We should be more careful. Wool. Wool. Will you be okay? Must. Must. 
He must know something. Shall. Shall. Shall I tell her? So often people don't hear function words at all in spoken English because the weak forms are used and they're hard to hear. So to help you notice the weak forms of these auxiliary verbs, I'm going to say five sentences. Pause the video if you need to, to number a document or paper one through five. I'll say each one three times, fast, then slower, then fast. Number one, are you listening to that new album? Are you listening to that new album? Are you listening to that new album? Number two, so she met the new neighbors. So is she met the new neighbors? So is she met the new neighbors? Number three. Can you pass me the salt? Could you pass me the salt? Can you pass me the salt? Number four. What does he do for work? What does he do for work? What does he do for work? Number five. Will they think we're crazy? Will they think we're crazy? Will they think we're crazy? So again, if you're watching with someone else or your teacher and classmates, pause the video and compare your answers. Go back and replay parts if you need to. Here are the answers. Pause the video if you need to while you check. So now let's go back and see if it's easier for you to notice Ashley using the weak form of can right here in red. Just as a side note, she also uses the weak form of you, which just becomes ya. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? So to review weak forms, they are the reduced form of function words. They're not stressed in a sentence. They don't get the emphasis. They're shorter. They're pronounced quickly, not pronounced clearly. Some sounds disappear completely, and the vowel often changes to a schwa sound, which is a. Uh. It's your turn. With a partner or alone, write a short story with at least five of these auxiliary verbs. Be, do, have, can, could, must, shall, should, will, would. And then tell it to your partner or teacher and classmates using their weak forms. And now for the real world listening challenge. Listen for an example of a weak form of one of these auxiliary verbs. Be, do, have, can, could, must, shall, should, will, would. In a recorded or real life conversation and post it in the comments or share it with your teacher and classmates. Thank you for watching this English micro listening lesson. 
I hope it has helped you to better hear how sounds change or disappear in spoken English. Bye.